you know, it's a very, very busy day here in Brooklyn. But that will not take me off my course, which is reviewing the Atom Audio T8V stand mount speaker. Now, Atom Audio is a pro sound company. They are based in Berlin, Germany, uh, but they're speakers, they make speakers. Some of their speakers have, let's say, crossover appeal to audiophiles, which is why I'm reviewing this speaker. But one thing that you have to understand right away about Atom Audio is from day one, their speakers used uh, air motion transformer tweeters, uh, or as they call them, accelerated ribbon tweeters. They design and manufacture their own tweeters. <clears throat> That's pretty special. Uh, but the other things that are special about this speaker, well, the other thing that's special is right below that 1.9 inch accelerated ribbon tweeter is an 8 inch polypropylene woofer. That's a pretty big woofer for a, you know, a me small to medium size stand mount speaker. It's about 16 inches high. It weighs 21.6 pounds. It's very solidly built. This, so this is an active speaker. I don't really review too many active speakers. They just, they really don't appeal to me because they're sort of trying to be a jack of all trades and in my opinion, master of none. But this speaker is very focused in its uh, job description. It's an active speaker. It's not, a, it's not a wireless speaker. It's not an everything speaker. It doesn't have digital inputs. No, it's just an active speaker. That's it. Now it's a bi amped design, so it has a 70 watt Class D amplifier on the woofer, a 20 watt Class D amplifier on the tweeter. So let's take a look at the back panel, and you'll see there's two inputs RCA and XLR because it is a pro sound speaker. Uh, it has a big bass port. So then if we look a little further down on the back panel there, you'll see it has two EQ controls one for low frequencies, which they call a shelf which is uh, centered at 300 hertz, and it's three options there, minus 2 dB, 0 dB, and plus 2, and a high frequency shelf, which is centered at 5K, and that is also minus 2 dB, 0, and plus 2 dB. There's also a level setting control. Now, you really wouldn't want to use the volume controls on the back of the left and right speakers. It would be kind of a pain in the ass to be going, reaching around behind to change the volume. So I imagine this, that most audiophiles or consumers will be using it with some source that has a volume control, like a preamplifier or a DAC with a volume control. That would be the most obvious way to go. But you could use your phone with, let's say, an AudioQuest Dragonfly Black, which is a DAC with a volume control, or a computer or something. But you need to have something with a volume control in front of the T8V. I'm going to take a very quick break from the review to just say that at the end of today's review, I'm going to post a picture of an Audiophiliac viewer's system and do a brief description of it. So stay tuned for that. So one really exceptional feature of the T8V is its warranty. It's a five-year warranty. And yeah, passive speakers can have five-year warranties. That's not so special. But active speakers? Active speakers selling for actually what this one sells for, which is $600 a pair. That's pretty, pretty rare. Very rare. I can't think of anybody else that does. So kudos to Adam Audio for providing a five year warranty. As for setup, I had the speaker sitting on 24 inch tall steel stands angled more or less directly onto the sweet spot. Uh, my source was an Oppo BDP 205 Blu-ray player. My first music selection for today was The Walk by The Cure uh, because it has lots and lots of deep bass, just like through the floor deep bass. And I wanted to see what those 8-inch woofers could do. And they could do plenty. <laughs> they were not wanting for low-end extension and power and slam. They really energized the room. The, the music has a lot of great rhythm to it too and these speakers can boogie. So in terms of the, the power and glory aspect of these speakers, no problem. Very, very uh, impressive and I doubt that too many people will need to pair them with a subwoofer to get enough bass energy. 
Okay, so the T8V can move some air on the bottom end. Got it. But what about finesse? What about detail and clarity on the low end? And to check that out, I pulled out Anna von Hosswuth's Ceremony CD. Now this recording, well, has an organ on it, as you might imagine looking at the cover there, right? But it is an actual church organ, not a synthesizer or samples. It's the real deal. So organs make sound by pushing air through long pipes to develop the lowest frequencies, right? And organs have like a breath to them, and it, well, they're moving air, right? And that's what I was getting out of the T8V, that, that breathy quality and extension and detail and clarity. So yes, this speaker can, can do both sides of the bass question, quantity, and quality. Now, th th there's more to this recording than that, though, because Anna's vocals are incredibly powerful and reaching for the sky and for the heavens, actually. Very, very nice. And then there's electronica, there's crunch sounds, there's guitars, there's all kinds of stuff going on. But the organ is the centerpiece of the record. It's a really great recording. I highly recommend it. Okay, so you're wondering, Steve, okay, okay, we get it. The bottom end is really good, but what about that accelerated ribbon tweeter? What is that doing? Oh, it's doing very well, thank you very much. It's got air, it's detail, clarity, uh, that, uh, that some of that breathy quality of the organ was due to the sound of that tweeter because I was just hearing the space. I hate to always bring that up, but there's no better way of describing what's going on in a recording like this. So over my listening sessions, I felt that the, the T8V was at its best. It's sort of medium, mid to medium loud volume level. Very quiet. I didn't, I don't know, I, I wasn't connecting with the music very well at late night levels. And when I push it really loud, mm, no, I wanted to turn it down. Uh, I also felt that there's a lot of bass <laughs> and the treble is fantastic, but the mid range was sort of recessed sounding. It just did not sound as warm and rich and full as I would have liked. Now, of course, these are subjective opinions. Some might call it a V-shaped response. I certainly would not go that far, not at all. But I, I wanted a little more mid-range warmth to the sound. Here's a recording for vocals, though. I have to share this one. It's by Indra Rios Moores, and it's her take on money the Pink Floyd track. And wow, she just makes this song her own. Uh, she's a terrific singer, but it's kind of sultry, late night, jazzy, smoky kind of performance. But she really focuses on the words. You know, listen to Pink Floyd's version. Yeah, the words are there. But when she's singing them, she's, she's setting a scene. She's telling a story there. Same words, but somehow she just pulls you into the story more than Roger did on the Pink Floyd version. But in any case, it's a terrific recording, really great quality, and her voice sounded wonderful. Really, really sweet. Very nice. So yeah, though I do have reservations about the warmth, and I would have preferred it a little more on a warmer sounding speaker, no, I was totally into it with the T8V. I should have said this earlier in the review, but I think it's obvious don't plan on putting this speaker in a small room or definitely don't plan on putting it near a wall or worse yet, up against a wall. That's a no-no. And even with the EQ position, even with the EQ switches at their minimum settings, no, this, this speaker puts out a lot of bass. You've got to give it some room to breathe. Speaking of breathing, you, this speaker needs some space. Now, I had them about 12 inches, 13 inches away from the wall behind them. And you know what? I should have tried even further out into the room. So that's important information. I have not been, I admit it, I have not been the biggest supporter or booster of active speakers in general. I think this one is sort of more my ballpark because it's such a great deal. For $600 a pair, you get a lot. The bass, the treble is fantastic. It's powerful sounding. It does a lot for your money. But my mental exercise here was, would a passive speaker with a, an integrated amp or receiver do better? Now, I didn't do an actual comparison, but I, I think a speaker like the 
ELAC debut 6.2, which I checked is selling for $260 a pair on Amazon, at least when I checked it yesterday. And you, you pair that with a Yamaha receiver, whose model number I can't remember right now, but this one here, which is about $300 on Amazon. So for $560, what would that sound like relative to the T8V? And here's what I, here's what I would predict. Well, the T8V is going to make a lot more bass, and the top end is going to be better. But in terms of the overall performance of the suite of the system, I think the ELAC Yamaha combination would be a lot smoother. So if you're the kind of audiophile who listens to acoustic music, or jazz, or classical, or folk music, or um, music that's not about power, in other words, not dance music, not EDM, you know, not stuff that requires a lot of low end punch. I don't know. I think going with something like a passive speaker, like an ELAC, and a receiver for about the same dollars might be a better way to go. And I say might be because this all really does come down to personal taste. That is, <laughs> I should say that in every review, it does come down to personal taste. So it's not a matter of picking the best or what's, no. It's a matter of what's going to work for you within your budget, within your room, within your music choices, uh, speaker placement issues uh, to, to overcome. All of those things are factors. So what my job here is to describe what I'm hearing as, a, as opposed to pronouncing best or you blow you away or something. That's not really what I'm here for. I don't think so. It's not what I'm trying to do. So there you have it. This has been a review of the Atom Audio T8V. But now we're going to do this new segment called Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. It's not like the shows where I do entire shows just of Audiophiliac Viewer Systems. No, this is just one at a time. And I'm going to include it in as many shows as I possibly can. But for today, well, let's see what we got. I'll be right back. I think Ho has a rather elegant bi amp system. The speakers are Lee Audio Lion Dust open baffle speakers with silver 8 inch full range drivers. There's also a Dayton Audio 15 inch woofer. The crossover was designed by Leon Hyden, and there's also a Sonus Faber Gravis B1 filling out the bottom octave. As for the amplifiers of this bi-amp system, for the full range driver, there's a Sophia Electric 9190 amp with an Elm 300B2 New Old Stock Soviet Tube Rectifier and a Sophia Aqua 6SN7 tube. For the 15 inch woofers, they're being driven by an Audio Research D120. The preamp is a Deckware CS3P with new old stock RCA 5U4G tubes and also new old stock 6N1P tubes. The turntable is a Lin LP12 with an Aikido MK1 tone arm. Cartridge is an Ortofon 2M. The power supply for the turntable is a Mohs Hercules 2. Phono stage is a Shit Manny. And the DAC in this system is a Bel Canto 1.5. Good stuff. I hope you like that. Anyway, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. To do that, super easy. Hit that button right, yeah, right down there. When you do, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time there's a new episode. Beyond that, well, you could check out my Patreon at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. There is a link to that directly below in the description box. But I also have playlists for speaker reviews and headphone reviews and electronics reviews and even music reviews plus interviews. So many interviews. It's my favorite part, actually. Anyway, I think my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching, and I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon.
Bye-bye.